Hi, I'm Lou Sean, an orthopedic surgeon, a foot and ankle specialist, and I'm here to talk about the high rise by Curve Beam. This is a weight bearing CAT scan that could get images of the foot, knee, and hip on a patient. It's very quick to acquire these sequences. It takes about three to four minutes, and I'm going to show you how this works. So the patient steps in, the gate is closed, and then the computer program activates the sequencing. So why would we bother with this when we have conventional CAT scan and conventional radiographs and MRIs? Well, it's a good question. As we know, radiographs, even if they're weight-bearing, are two-dimensional representation of three-dimensional objects. And so we don't really have the full information about what's happening of those three-dimensional objects because we're only capturing in a certain plane. With the CAT scanning device, we can see all the relationships, so the relationships of all the bones to each other, and we could also see the uh, soft tissues, and we could see also the relationships of the bones to the ground. So therefore, we're able to make numerous measurements that can be useful to really accurately represent what is happening, again, in a three-dimensional structure, the human body, in a three-dimensional format. And then you could reformat those images to take single slices to get your measures, measurements. And this allows us to get very detailed preoperative information. The preoperative information then is fed into your bank, which then hopefully helps you to choose a procedure that's right for the patient. Now, since the technology is relatively new, all the studies that have been done with regular weight-bearing x-rays will need to be redone to see how we need to set up our protocols for treatment. And subsequently, after we've done those surgeries, how those surgeries affects those three-dimensional relationships. So this is really the way of the future for us to really come up with a fine guideline of indications, surgical choices, and then surgical outcome. Again, using three-dimensional imaging for a three-dimensional structure. Now I'm gonna give you a few examples. For example, we have a ankle arthritis case. Now, sometimes you have a little bit of ankle arthritis and it may be slightly tilted and you wouldn't know on a regular x-ray, but you get a weight-bearing x-ray, you see the little tilt. You get the weight-bearing uh, CAT scan and now you could actually map out the geometry of that joint, where it's most narrow, where there's good cartilage, where there's bony erosion, where there's cysts, all that could be fed into your algorithm and you may say, that case may be very good for an oats or for some uh, osteotomy. Or conversely, it's too much of the joint that's involved. The joint morphology dictates that we need to do a total ankle replacement. And these algorithms have yet to be established, but we're really looking forward to this informing how we choose the surgery and then looking at the outcome again in a meaningful way. So current indications that I use the weight-bearing CAT scan uh, for is I do it for some of my forefoot reconstructions that are complex. My midfoot Charcot collapses, the deformities that are multi-segmental. I use it for a hindfoot deformity for the progressive collapsing foot deformities uh, for what we used to call posterior tib tendon insufficiency and how that affects all the layers, all the different joints, up to the, even up to the knee. Now, uh, we also use it for the cavus foot, and we're using it for our preoperative ankle reconstruction cases. One other indication that's very useful is for trauma. So we have the syndesmotic injuries that we've demonstrated will show uh, the anterior translation of the fibula, the lateral translation of the fibula, posterior translation, rotation, all these things can be seen with a weight-bearing CAT scan that you would miss on regular weight-bearing x-rays or on a non-weight-bearing CAT scan. We've shown this in some papers. Uh, also, we're looking at it for midfoot deformity uh, from injury such as a Liz Frank injury or for midfoot subluxation. So there's a lot to happen in this space, this very special three-dimensional space that we can now capture. And uh, the future is bright for lots of great research projects 
and for making very good indications for surgery and following them up with very specific detailed images. So uh, we look forward to the future and thanks for listening.